would ever think such a state-of-the-art, high-tech facility would be hiding in the rolling hills of the Wisconsin Dairy Country? Through the metropolis of Iola, population 667, turn right at the mailbox, left at the cow, and you're there. The SNS factory farm, where they grow some of the most cutting-edge speed technology in the world. SNS stands for Speed and Speed, not really. It stands for Smith and Smith, Mr. and Mrs., who started building parts to race with over 50 years ago. George had a simple philosophy, make all motorcycles go faster. Boy, did he. He made them go very fast. George set the first land speed record in 1954, topping 152 miles an hour. Speed is what they produce with technology designed to make history and rewrite record books. SNS loves a good challenge. The 145 Tribute, and last year it was the 124 VFI Challenge. A huge success with some crazy bad machines in the end. This year, after much deliberation and a couple of fist fights, it was decided it's going to be retro with a shovel head engine. Welcome to the Old School Shovel Tour. Five of the baddest builders on the scene each receive a brand spanking new 93 inch shovel head engine and the challenge to build the coolest thing they can think of. It's a diverse group of masters. Who knows how radical they'll get? Of course, what better way to test their creations than head to head in research and development department? Hawk Hawks Racing Chica. How cool is that? Big Mike Rouse of Big Mike Choppers from Bend, Oregon. Mike's manufacturing crew turns out six to seven bikes a day. It was a real treat to get to design a one-off. If he wasn't a bike builder, Mike would be a TV host. He's funny, does great wheelies, and builds a snazzy bike really fast. The James Dean of Japan. Some say Chica's bikes are like trips to other worlds. Only eight to 10 Lucky Joes a year get to ride their own tailor-made Chica Custom a man of few words and many motorcycles. Kevin Alsop was old school when old school was new school. Big Bear Choppers out of Big Bear, California, he designed some sick one-offs and then designs them as kits. It's an idea that's really caught on. Kano Sasaki and Paul Cox out of Brooklyn carry on the Indian Larry legacy completing the bike that Larry had committed to build shortly before his tragic death. Blending Larry's vision and their own twisted finesse cooked up an awesome machine. Jesse Rook of Rook Customs out of Huntington Beach, California is the visionary hipster that's made his presence felt in a big way. He first made noise with an innovative Schwinn type design that caught everyone's eye. He builds cool bikes and mosquitoes find him quite tasty. The rules for the old school shovel tour are pretty simple. First you had to start out with an unmodified 93 cubic inch SNS shovel head style engine. You had to build the bike for under $20,000, not including paint, and it had to be a Kickstarter, because without a Kickstarter it can't be old school. Finally, you had to take a 120 mile shakedown ride from our customer support center in La Crosse, Wisconsin to the track in Earlville, Iowa. Now one of the last points that was not an official rule but was certainly one of the most exciting events during the old school shovel tour was the head-to-head -head drag racing that took place between the builders at the quarter mile drag strip in Earlville, Iowa. It was a lot of fun to watch. You're watching Sunday's old school shovel tour. Jesse Rook, the visionary California hipster, started a stir with his very first bike. It's not often someone comes along, changes the formula, and puts a completely new skew on an old standard. But that's exactly what he did. And he's been in the spotlight ever since, continuing to evolve and grow on every build, always surprising and innovative. The only thing I know is we have some rules, you know, like it has to be a kicker, which I've never done a kicker. So I was asking Paul Cox this weekend, you know, man, 
what are we uh, yeah. I'm trying to find out about the trannies, the primaries, the clutches, you know. I didn't even know what exhaust flanges to use on this thing, you know, the exhaust ports. I'm, that's how much of a rookie I am in the whole deal. But those, Paul, you know, it's cool. You know, he's helping me out. He answered my questions and stuff, and, and that's what I need right now. So to, to tell you, you know, what are we doing? No, I have no clue. It just said it's got to be an old school kicker. Jesse builds a limited number of bikes, wanting to make sure each bike bearing his name bears his handprint. I only want to build 10 bikes this year. Kind of put a limit, like, that's all I can do, you know. I'm, I'm a one-man show, and it, I don't want anybody else coming in to build my bikes for me. You know, if it's a Jesse Roof bike, then it was built by Jesse Roof. Blessing from the industry, you know, from the notoriety I've gotten on my bikes, I'm able to buy these. I mean, normally, they don't even sell the wheel blanks like this to people. This just happens to be a real cool guy in the industry, you know, he's in the bikes. So he uh, takes care of me like most people have. Jesse cracks open a box with a wheel he'd hoped was for s and Somehow the wheel didn't make it, so Jesse had to start mocking up with a substitute. Hello, this is Jesse. But this frame, you know, the frames I've been starting with, this is my Cali Cruiser. Um, we got another one that I debuted at the Pomona Show, the X1. That's the Cali Racer style. So that one was a huge hit. Actually won the show. So I was surprised. That's why I saw some filming that you guys did where the, the wheel was spinning and it looks like uh, the sprocket's going backwards <laughs> and everything's going different directions. Really cool. And I wanted to build more bikes, so I called everybody. And SNS is the company, you know, James was like, who are you? You know, why, why should I help you out, you know, when I got, you know, other, these other guys, you know, Eddie, Eddie Trotta buys 80 motors at a time from him, you know, he's like, why should I help, why, why should I give you a deal? You haven't even bought anything from me. And I was like, yeah, you're right, you know, I, I want to, I just can't afford it, you know, so you can help me out. And then, so James blew me off for a little while, and then uh, they helped me out on um, my Chop Shop bike, the tour bike for last year. Uh, and ever since then, you know, I came out with a couple more bikes and used their products, and they were, they were happy. Actually, the motor is so cool, you know, I, I like it so much that I decided to get another one for them to put in the Hard Rock bike. So I'm gonna have um, actually three of the new shovel heads in Daytona. A competitive racer, Jesse brings the deep desire to win to his creation. He was weaned on motorcycles from the moment he was born. His dad raced and built racing bikes, so Jesse got the bug early and has been involved with bikes and racing ever since. Once a competitor, always a competitor. That pretty new shovel head slides in. It's a beautiful thing. What kind of hats you got over there? This is the beginning of my SNS uh, shovel project. This is uh, day one. Just got a frame. You know, I had this frame from a year ago, uh, similar to one I did with a pan head. Uh, I think it's going to go really well with this new shovel and just get the engine in and try to get it built up. Day one of a lot of long days. Uh, he's gonna be the, one of those like Schwinn looking bicycle style motorcycle, which is cool too. The design element that seems to personify Jesse's style the most is the bicycle style frame. Who knew how different it would look to move the gas tank from its hollowed position on the frame? It's carved out a niche, all Jesse's own. So needless to say, he spends a great deal of time and effort on that particular piece making sure it's perfect. Seeing his ideas in his mind, he shies away from drawings, preferring to dive in and let the bike grow organically. There's a lot of looking, and a lot of staring, and some more looking. Usually you can tell when I'm fabbing a new bike because my face gets burned. Little adjustments until everything is perfect with the frame. Josh, what's up? Two uh, 
two guys from Limp Biscuit are buying them too. More looking. Now it's on to the front end. Jesse's taking his time putting together the front end. Even as he's pounding away on the frame, making final adjustments, he's thinking about how this bike is going to grow. No drawings. I don't use any drawings when I build my bikes. I just can see it. And, you know, I kind of have a vision for what I want. And then I make adaptions to that along the way or whatever. Maybe I see something new or a new line, but I just have a a basic overall idea and then start building. You know, this, this build needs to be finished in... I'd like to have it finished by the end of the week. This was the base, like I say, this is one of two that are out there. The one that's finished now is a bike I built called Vegas. You know, it's got a banana seat on it and a sissy bar, which is what I'm thinking about doing to this, you know, another banana seat, some big ace hangers on it, something that's really fun to ride, you know, you can stand up on it, skid it, wheelie it. Um, I'm expecting this engine to be really, really fun. I mean, it's a 93 cubic inch, which, you know, the, the engine I had used last time was only 88. This should have a bunch more power. Obviously, the SNS has done a good job with getting the power out of it. Um, gonna have a kicker tranny which I've never used before so you know hopefully I'll be able to kick it I might have to gain a little bit of weight yeah every, everybody's building the bikes that slam down with no uh, kickstands I'm gonna build one that hops off the ground <laughs> his father operated a machine shop and worked on motorcycles so Jesse learned the art of fabrication starting at an early age welding bending tubing in any shape he wants forming sheet metal to his mind's whim all became the things he can do in his sleep and after years of doing dirt bikes and building kart racers, he's got an excellent handle on making things go fast enough to win. This right here is my Cadillac. Jesse shows off his state-of-the-art Cadillac leg. Practicing, you know, the bends, trying to figure out which one, how far. The tube bender makes his life a little easier, but even that is free form. It's kind of funny because uh, a lot of times, the first time I'm doing it, I just pick a number that I like. Some people don't understand that, you know, it's not like this is new to me because I've been on a motorcycle. I started riding when I was three. When I was six weeks old, I was at the Daytona 200 with my father. You know, motorcycles is my life. It's been my life all of it and it's a passion to me. I just happen to be new into the V-Twin custom industry. I'm not doing this to, to take from anybody or steal from anybody. I respect the people that are in the industry more than they can believe. Like Ron Sims. This is a guy that hates me. He hates me. I went over to say hi to him to shake his hand. He told me, get out of here. And I really like Ron Sims. Like he is, um, I don't know. He's up. He's on the same field to, to me as Jesse James, Blue Lane, or maybe above those guys, right? Arlen Ness, uh, Iperowitz, uh Ron Finch, who I didn't even know until I did the discovery thing. Uh, I don't know why, but he hates me. I mean, he he despises me. But hopefully, it's going to come across that you know I. I really respect him, I like his stuff. He's somebody that I look at in the industry that you, you want your career to be, right? I mean, I'm in the early stages of mine. Well, I want to be around for 30 years. I'm not here for just tomorrow's glory. I'm not doing the TV stuff because I want to be famous today and be popular to my friends and stuff like that. You know, I grew up racing. I've been a champion, you know, I've lost races, I've won races. You know, the, the V-Twin industry is, is similar to the racing industry in a lot of ways where there's a family. So if you can get into it, then they embrace you. And it feels like this year that they've embraced me. You know, hanging out in Sturgis, which is definitely my favorite rally that I've been to by far. It's like a life-changing experience when you go to Sturgis. I, I took some guys from Rockstar there, some younger kids this year, and it blew them away. You know, these are Huntington Beach kids wearing pink shirts and their hair all crazy and gold glasses. And if people were looking at them like, what in the heck? By the end of the trip, everyone liked those kids just as much as, you know, they've liked their family members. 
and those guys are like, hey, we're going back every year of our life, you know, when we get married, we're taking our family here, so it's, it's funny, but that's, that's the feeling you get from the industry, and I mean, that's why I'm in it right now, because I really like it, not because I like TV cameras, or I like all the stress and stuff I have, yeah, because when I do this, you know, I'm stressed out the shop for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks, and then when I go to the rallies, I close everything down. It's like being at a race. You forget about everything else. You're just concentrated there on hanging out with your friends and riding, you know, and you get up in the Black Hills and start riding around, you're not thinking about, you know, if the phones are ringing or who you got to call back or, or what's going on. I mean, it's the biggest relief, the best thing. Shut it off a little bit. Exactly. It was Jesse James, Indian Larry, Giuseppe Ronser, and Chopper Dave all rode to Sturgis. You know, they did the mo Motorcycle Mania 2 was the episode. I never what saw one. What did spark in your head? Just that, you know, um, the one thing that sticks out in my mind is when uh, Jesse was uh, bending a tube. You know, he didn't have a ring roll bender or something at the time, so he cut a piece of wood to shape, you know, heated up the tube and then bent it around to get the shape he was looking for. And that is the kind of things that my father used to do in the garage, because we didn't have a lot of money. And it was just, the, the things that my father instilled in me are, you know, if you want to do it, find a way to make it happen. You know, you, there's, if, if you don't have the money here today, don't just sit there and wait for the money or, or whatever, you know, find a way to make it happen. So I couldn't afford to buy, you know, the bitch and bike because they were too expensive. So I saw the show and I was like, man, I'll just try to build one. Because I had, I knew this shop was here because I do, you know, racing out of here for my whole life, you know, doing, I built exhaust pipes here, motor mounts, all kinds of stuff. Did you feel confident that you could build something? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I guess I just, I always have that confidence that, you know, I'm a racer. When I, I'm going to do it, I'm trying to do it to, to win, you know, I want to be the best. And I always wanted my stuff to look, look the best. That thing's going to keep going if we don't kill it. The thing for me that I want to push is, you know, do your own thing. You know, do what people tell you you can't do. Because my first bike, a lot of people told me, it's not going to work, why are you going to do that, you know, why? What are you talking about? You know, that's crazy. I said, you know, I don't know. I just, it's what I want. So if it doesn't work, then it was going to be a coffee table, you know? I had a go-kart as a coffee table. I was like, man, I'll just lay it down on the ground and put a piece of glass and it would be like art or something. And it ended up working. But that's the biggest deal is to do whatever you want to do. I mean, if it's in your mind that you want to build something and it's, people say that it's, why would you do that? Or, you know, don't do that. It's probably going to be really cool. Yeah, events like this SNS tribute thing is is what's bringing it all together. This is what's blending us together. Because how else would I get put on the same platform as the Indian Larry tribute bike, as you know, BMC, you know, Big Mike stuff. Big Mike, man, that's one of the guys that I was kind of scared of in the beginning. He was the guy that was looking at me like, you don't build your bike, they don't run, you know, and. When I fired up my bike and rode away, you know, I didn't tell anybody I was going to do it. It was my Kathy, the Cali Cruiser, you know, no one thought it ran. It was just a show bike. Fired up and rode away, you know, he was over everybody. You could hear him, yeah, you know, this arm up and it was like, hey, that's so cool. Yeah, the SNS old school shovel head tour. True to the bicycle style, Jesse's finished bike is going to turn some heads and definitely blow some people's socks off. It's a sleek and aerodynamic adrenaline machine that's sure to light everyone up. It's on the way to Daytona to hook up with the other bikes on the next leg of the Old School Shovel Tour.